Oh, look at the oh. hats. Those are sombreros. And shoes. We're moving into Ballet Folklorico. Danza. Wow. Everybody's dancing here. Mm -hmm. Look at the skirts twirling. Yeah, she's got a nice skirt. And the shoes. You need those shoes for clip-clopping. Yeah. Amalia Hernandez was born in Mexico City in 1917, and everyone assumed she would grow up to be a school teacher like her mother and her grandmother. Even Ami, as everyone called her, expected that. But one afternoon, while her family was on vacation, <gasps> Ami saw a pair of dancers in a town square. They stomped and swayed to the live music. The danzas that they performed had been danced by people of that area for generations. Ami was hooked. She made a decision. She was going to become a dancer herself. Oh, look at Ami right there, looking at the dancers and the musicians. Look at that. The music they play. They got a violin and that big guitar. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> And a bass, and oh, she's twirling her. You know, Izzy does this dancing. Izzy does <gasps> ballet folklore. You know? Yeah. And we saw a band playing outside of the grocery store today, too. Yeah. Live music. Okay. Uh, Ami twirled in the Saxophone, yeah. And a drum? The drum. That was a cute little drum set. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ami twirled in the living room and whirled in the kitchen. Amalia, scolded her father, a stern military man. But her mother encouraged Ami's interest in the arts, and one day her father gave in. He had a studio built in their home and hired the best dance teachers he could find. That's a change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After school, Ami studied ballet with Madame Dambre, who had danced with the Paris Opera and with Professor Zybin, who had danced with Pavlova's world-renowned Russian ballet. Oh, look at that. Mm. Look at that slick back hair. Very yeah. profesh. And they're at the bar. Mm-hmm. Look how flexible Ami is. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> Ami worked on her technique and made sure she always pointed her feet. She perfected the different structured positions Whoa. and became an accomplished ballerina. Look at the dance moves. The yeah. positions. This is first position. Arabesque. Pirouette. Fifth position. Grand Batement. Mm. That's the big one. Wow. In 1939, two dancers from the United States visited Mexico City, where Ami lived. They performed a new style of dance called modern. Amalia was deeply impressed. The movements were expressive, and they could be jarring when compared with the delicate movements of ballet. Look at the shadows. You see the shadows? Look at her toenails. <laughs> <laughs> they have no shoes on. Uh -uh. Ami met Waldine, one of the modern dancers, and began to study with her. She also continued practicing ballet. Ami was very talented and disciplined. In time, she became a dance teacher and choreographer herself. A choreographer is a person who creates dance steps and arranges them together to create new dance pieces. In 1952, after rehearsing for months, Ami and other dancers gave a performance. They presented many different dances, but the one the audience clapped for the most was a piece called Sones de Michoacán. Mm -hmm. Ami was the choreographer, and the dance was similar to the regional danza that she had seen in the town square when she was a little girl. Wow. So she wears a big fancy skirt. Look at that. What color is that skirt? It's what like color that. is it? And it twirls around. Is that a pink skirt? Or is it a blue skirt? We're still deciding on the color of the skirt. Okay. <laughs> that might come at the end. <laughs> Ami had an idea. She decided that she would create ballets based on the folkloric danzas 
from the different regions of Mexico. Oh. She was so excited that she formed her own company with seven other dancers. Ami began to travel to villages all around the country to learn as much as she could about the area's traditional dances. She read about the history of each place and talked with elders. When possible, she participated in the dances herself. She paid special attention to the steps, the music, and the outfits the people wore. Oh, look at that box drum. One of my favorites. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, and the iguana. Oh, you know iguana. Yeah, they live in Mexico. Okay. After returning home, Ami would go to the dance studio. The danzas y bailes she saw in the village were for ceremonial purposes, like celebrating a patron saint or hoping for a good harvest. Other times, the dances happened so people could have fun and meet new friends. However, the dancing piece, the dance piece Ami was creating, the dance pieces Ami was creating were meant to be performances for audiences to watch in a theater. Ami used her skills as a choreographer and her knowledge of both ballet and modern dance to make the pieces innovative and beautiful. She made sure the dancers wore dazzling costumes and that there was a dramatic lighting, there was dramatic lighting and spectacular backdrops. Whoa, looks dramatic. Lots of people are dancing now. Hmm. And they got men and women. And they interesting. Everybody's dancing. Yeah. Her company's growing. Yeah. Audiences love the folkloric ballets, and Amalia's dance company quickly became the most famous. In 1954, they performed on they performed on the Funcion de Gala television show. They danced on the show every week for more than 60 weeks. Wow. The company grew to include 20 dancers and then 50. 50 dancers? That's a lot of dancers. We can't. That's a lot of people. Look at the lights. Do you see the lights on the stage? Yeah, here's a guy on a camera. Yeah. He's yeah. There's a light there, and there's, there's almost the same lights on the stage. The lights shine on the book. Looks like stage lights. <laughs> the company's repertoire of stock dances included ballets based on mestizo bailes, like the Sones Horaches from Veracruz. Mestizo is the combination of Amerindian, European, and African traditions. In this ballet, musicians dressed in white played the harp and guitars as the dancers stomped to, on a tarima. Mm, that must be that big wood piece, tarima. You know that, um, that song... Um, uh, para bailar yeah. uh, la bamba. Uh huh. That's from Vera Cruz. That is one of these dances. It's a folkloric dance, ah. and they use a ribbon that the man wears around his stomach like a sash. Mm -hmm. And then at some point during the dance, the woman pulls on it. They throw it on the floor, and then together the couple moves with only their feet, and they make a bow. Oh, out of the ribbon. It's by their just, wow, just with their feet. It's really amazing. that would be so amazing to see. Okay, so that'd be my dream. Yeah, we'll to perform you. the bow. <laughs> just <laughs> kidding, just to watch it. I don't know how you do that. Uh, oh, look at that. The company's repertoire also included ballets based on indigenous dances, like La Danza de Veran Venado from the Yaqui in the Sonoran Desert. That's the dance of the deer. Yeah, can you see the deer? Yeah. Benji, can you see the deer up there? Mm. Okay. And Los Quetzales from Nahuas no and Totonaco, people in the Valley of Mexico. Wow. The Quetzal is a bird. It's a green bird. Oh, and I can kind of see how it could be the feathers. Do you see that? Yeah. It could be the feathers. It's yeah. got long green feathers. For There's a lot of connections. 
Some of the company's ballets were not based on traditional dances, but were original pieces inspired by Mexico's pre-Columbian past. Mm. Ami wanted to celebrate the history of her country. She looked at the sculptures and art that the ancient civilizations like the Aztecs and Maya had created. She conceived dance steps for ballets like La Gran Tenochtitlan, based on that art. Wow, do you see it? Yeah. yeah. There's a pyramid in the back. Oh. And these are all the Aztec and Maya characters. She put animals. a lot of work into these dances. Yeah. Some ballets were inspired by more recent history and by music like the polka and oh. waltz, which were popular with the wealthy in the 19th century, or by corridos, which were popular with the poor at the beginning of the 20th century. Ami would often dance as Juana Gallo, a fierce female soldier of the time. Juana Gallo. And Gallo is rooster. The company became a great success, not only in Mexico, but abroad, too. In 1959, the American government, or the Mexican government, <laughs> big difference there, <laughs> asked it to represent Mexico in the Pan American Games. Mm. These games are similar to the Olympics, but only athletes from the Americas compete. It was a great honor to be a part of such an important event. That year, Ami decided to call the company El Ballet Folklorico de México, Mexico's Folkloric Ballet. The company became truly international in 1961 when it won the first prize at the prestigious Festival of the Nations in Paris. Famous ballets and important dance troops from all over the world competed at the event. After the Folkloric Ballet won, it was invited to tour in Europe. Later on, it visited Japan and Australia. The dancers even performed next to the Great Sphinx in Egypt. Oh, do you see the Sphinx up there? There's the Sphinx. And what's the Sphinx under? What is that? You recognize that. The moon? Yeah. All these places you have to go visit. Okay. To be touring the world was exciting for Ami, but it was not simple to arrange. The company needed transportation for 50 or so dancers, musicians, and sound and lighting technicians, and more than three tons Whoa, of costumes. that's a lot. Ami decided to stop dancing so she could focus on choreographing and directing the company. Choreographing, I guess. <laughs> She was now like a general, much like her military father, mm -hmm. supervising all the different people involved in the folkloric ballet and making sure the shows came out perfectly. The company had so many engagements that Ami had to create two groups, one to travel around the world and one to offer performances in Mexico. That's a lot of people. It's a lot of responsibility. Yes. Look at, see Ami directing? That goes here. <laughs> and these guys have, they have lights. Oh, what's that? Yeah, microphone. And what's he got? You know a guitar, is it a guitar, guitar case? Guitar? Yeah. You saw one by the piano today. Maybe we'll yeah. bust it out. Okay. <laughs> Just Look with that. wake the whole neighborhood. <laughs> In 1968, Ami opened a dance school. Her brother, who was an architect, designed the building, which housed studios and classrooms. At the school, students could learn folkloric dance and also ballet and modern dance. Often the dancers who studied at the school became professionals in Amalia's company. As the years passed, Ami continued teaching and supervising the folkloric ballet's rehearsals. She had become a school teacher after all, like her mother and her grandmother. Aww. Can you do that? Can you throw your leg up in the air like that? You know who can? Cousin mm. Lana can. She mm. is very flexible. Do you think Lana's going to be a ballet dancer? Yeah. Yeah. And you could too. Work on your flexibility. Or do the lighting. On your rhythm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or the music. 
<laughs> Amalia Hernandez passed away on November 5, 2000, but her legacy lives on. El Ballet Folclorico de México performs every Wednesday and Saturday at the Palacio de Bellas Artes, the Palace of Fine Arts in Mexico City. They have been doing so without interruption for more than 50 years. The company also continues to tour internationally. Today, there are thousands of Mexican folkloric dance troops, both professional and amateur, in Mexico and the United States. Perhaps you've seen one perform at your school or in your neighborhood for Cinco de Mayo. Maybe you've even dressed as a charro and danced El Jarabe Tapatio. I know I have. Ami inspired <laughs> generations of dancers to perform these danzas. She made the folkloric dances of Mexico known around the world, and she encouraged people of Mexican origin to feel pride in their roots and their traditional dances. Dun dun. Oh, look at that. So here's a whole glossary. It tells you all about these words. The references and the bibliography and the author's notes. Look at all the information. Oh, a lot of information in that book that they had to pull from. Yeah. And look at that. They're dancing and having fun. Yeah. Those tambourines. Those are really big tambourines. I think those are their sombreros. Oh, <laughs> The angle is I'm like no cause... symbols. <laughs> yeah. Usually tambourines have symbols. <laughs> Good try though. <laughs> well, this, yeah. The musicians are featured and that makes more sense because the shoes and the yeah. super <laughs> So that's dansa. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Uncle something. Donna. Yeah, sure.